Expedition Trailhead. Seattle, that's right. <laughs> the journey begins here at the Draper Museum of Natural History, where understanding Yellowstone's wildlife begins. Probably heard, of course, of the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem, Greater Yellowstone area with the capital A. Uh, we've broadened that area a little bit to cover some, some different kinds of environments and uh, that we think still are linked uh, to this, this broad region economically, biologically, uh, and geologically. Next stop, Cook City, near Yellowstone's northeast gate. Destination, Lamar Valley, often called the Serengeti of North America. The search for wolves, bears, and so many other wild creatures starts as the sun rises. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning, came out to Lamar Valley, and behind me here now we're watching four wolves, uh, all black, probably remnants of the Slough Creek pack. We also, in the, almost the same field of view, we have a bald eagle nest with two eagles uh, that are attending the nest. Uh, we have elk that uh, are skittering around the, uh, the wolves a bit. Of course, we've got bison elk. Uh, we have elk calves and quite a few bison calves out here. So this is, uh, it really is an amazing adventure. Our people are really excited at everything we're seeing. We've been able to see beaver. A golden eagle yesterday came down just in front of, of uh, where our, our car was coming through. Uh, and I think just the, the overall experience of wildness, that's what they're really experiencing here and that you can't experience in many other places anymore. <laughs> I think the tie that binds is that experience that takes us out of the everyday, uh, in, in many ways the artificial life that we live, uh, to a realistic existence, uh, the real adventure of wildlife. I mean, this is nature. Uh, this is how it operates. This is how it's been operating for perhaps 10,000 years in this, in this region alone. Uh, and it, it really connects people uh, with nature. A midday rest prepares the explorers for the sunset surprise. A pack of wolves, the Druid Peak Pack at Round Prairie. Central Creek on. They have such a family structure. I think that's part of their appeal too. The cooperation that they have with each other, the way they raise pups together. Um, even when they're hunting, there seems to be an unspoken communication that goes on. I mean, they just came out with a study released by University of Montana that wolves have brought in, what, $70 million into the ecosystem. And that's just wolves, people who come repeatedly. And, you know, they buy gas, they stay in hotels, they buy meals, they buy food. And, you know, they buy trinkets, they buy wolf-related things. They spend a lot of money and a lot of time here, and then they go back and spread the word. I mean, we saw someone yesterday who's been here six days looking for wolves. And they're staying in a hotel and they're buying meals at restaurants and they're buying gas at almost $3 a gallon. So, I mean, that's a significant boost to the economy. But wolves aren't the only excitement, not by a long shot. Oh my goodness, we're watching a bald eagle nest over there right now that um, had two eagles on it when we got here and one of them flew away and the other one is just sitting there. We saw beavers and wolves and black bear and grizzly bear and bison of course and I'm going to get some elk and pronghorn and um, deer today exceeds my expectations this is wonderful I feel like a kid at Christmas I've been excited for weeks it's what we don't have in our everyday lives it's we're busy we're um, running here we're on a time schedule but here it's nature at its best it's a real um, repositioning of your soul <laughs> that that works. Beaver, we, he went underwater and now we can't see him. See him up there, Bob? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's just too cool.